Okay, welcome. Let's create a new web app using HTMX bun with Hono. So let's get straight to it. Bun create Hono, and we're going to make it in this folder. We're going to use bun, and it's going to install in a flash like that. Let's run it and let's launch it here. So we have a web app working already. It's just serving text at the moment, this c.txt. Let's replace this with a render method. And let's put some HTML in here. And I'm going to have to change this to be a TSX file. And then I'm going to have to change the script to run a TSX file. So we can now have JSX running. Uh, what's going on? It's badly formatted. Great, we've got HTML. Okay, so to get HTMX working, we are gonna create a layout file. And the reason for that is we don't want to have to return um, the same kind of header information every time we call an endpoint. We want to wrap our endpoint um, kind of response HTML in a common header and all that kind of thing. So let's do that. We get a nice method from the Hono um, JSX um, sub library, which is a JSX renderer. And it's in uh, from Hono slash JSX renderer. That's the one. What this gives us is the children of the render method. So when we call c.render, all the contents of that c.render get passed through to children here, which means we can put, put them inside our content here, inside our wrapper. So let's uh, return some HTML language. Let's get GPT to help us out here. There we are. I'm going to add a description as well. Great. So we've got a layout, but we need to use it. So we need to imp implement the uh, middleware on this wildcard here so it hits everything. And then we're going to use our root layout. What that means is that every time we hit c.render, it's going to wrap it all in our, our, len, our layout there. So you can see that in the inspector here, we've got the head. That's doing the right thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the HTMX script and some Tailwind script to it. And we can see it's working there because Tailwind has nuked all of the styling. Um, let's add some styling to this. I'm going to have full screen and I'm going to flex and put everything in the middle like that. Um, I'm going to give us a dark background as well because I like a dark background. And I'm going to change the hello world here to a span, if I can spell it, which I'm also going to style. I'm going to give that a class. Uh, let's go 3XL, let's font bold it, and let, yeah, let's set it to text neutral, say 300. Great. Okay, so we've got web page. Um, it's using the root layout. We've got HTMX working, but we're not using any HTMX at the moment. We haven't done anything HTMXy. So let's do something HTMXy. I've got an idea. Why don't we set a loading state here? Often when you hit a web page, um, you want to get a nice fast response from the from the site with just the uh, kind of base layout of the site, and then you want the um, 
the, the app asynchronously to go off and get data and, and populate the page. So you're not having to sit there um, while, uh, for example, your app goes and hits the database and gets data and sanitizes it and puts it into a nice format and then renders it into um, a, a nice view for you to see. So um, what we're going to do is lazy load that data. We're, we're going to return our data, our, our endpoint immediately with some HTML here saying loading. And then we're going to get it to hit a post endpoint to replace this span with some actual some data. Now in this case, we'll do something simple. But let's declare that endpoint. It's a post endpoint. It's going to be on the root again. And just like before, we use C. But we're, this time, we're going to use C.HTML instead of C.render. Why? Because this is going to return a fragment of HTML rather the, than the full wrapped page of HTML. This one got wrapped in the layout uh, because we declared it here because it's using the render method. This one will just return the HTML that we declare inside. So let's um, declare a span and we're going to say hello world. And let's put some formatting on it. I'm going to go even bigger. And I'm going to make it white. Okay, this is going to do nothing because we're not calling the post endpoint. So let's now employ HTMX to call it. This tells this tag to call the post endpoint. And when it gets the response, it will replace the contents of the tag with the response, which is going to be this. But there's no condition upon which to call it. In fact, the default uh, condition is a tr is a click. So, if we ran this and then clicked it, it would work. But what we want is we want to load it automatically. So, we want to use the load trigger. What's going to happen now is it literally goes straight to Hello World. But if we look at our network tab, you'll see um, it first got the page, which contained the loading. Um, span there and then it called the post endpoint there which came back with the hello world fragment which is great let's um, simulate a wait on here shall we um, let's pretend that it's going to hit a database I have to make this an async method and we're going to the GPT is helping me out there so now we get loading for one second and then it returns hello world. So we are um, seeing this thing work like a dream. I'm going to make this quick again. Pretend we've got a nice quick database call. Let's go and have a look at the um, Lighthouse score and see how we're doing um, for performance and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to call this with lighthouse i'm using arc oh my word 99 percent okay and what if we took that down to 20 milliseconds are we going to manage to get 100 on lighthouse let's see come on come on i'm rooting for you boom oh there you go there's a first so um we have a performant web app that is uh, returning dynamic content and we've got a layout here and you can imagine that if we want to grow this out we can um, easily um, separate out our code into other files we could have our um, this method here which would be our um, index so that's on request get and I, I tend to use this convention for um, calling my endpoints just because that's how a lot of um, these PaaS um, like Cloudflare and other um, platforms declare their endpoints and so people tend to know what what the um, what it's there for the, the HANA context. OK, 
okay and then we've got our so I'm gonna import Post. I'm going to take all this um, and that's going to be an on request post which we haven't declared yet but you can see how we could effectively have a file for each um, oops too much there Hopefully, this does the right thing. There you go. So you can see how we can structure our code a bit nicer. We could have a pages folder that we put these in or a roots folder um, and declare them in here. Um, I've, I've written a script that I will share at some point, which I run in bun, which automatically um, it does file based um, routing and so I have a roots folder and it automatically passes that folder and it uses a kind of Next.js style naming convention and these on request get and on request post type um, exported methods to auto generate a whole bunch of routes for you I quite like doing it that way but uh, the nice thing with Hono is you can do it any way you like um, hopefully that's given you something to look at and something to um, try out in terms of HTMX. We'll look at again in another tutorial at some other methods and some other features and patterns of HTMX. Um, until next time, see you soon.